Good afternoon. As Dave said, I'm Josh. Uh, it is a pleasure to be speaking to you this afternoon. Who here has finished their Christmas shopping? Well, there's a few hands gone straight up. There's a bit of confidence in the room. Well, you're doing better than me. I am so far behind. It's only a week to go. Um, I'm feeling the pressure a little bit. But um, some people are great at buying presents, aren't they? They just seem to know just what to get. My wife, Ellie, is definitely in this category. And I'd like to say that I am too, but I think she might have a different opinion. Uh, she still reminds me of the presents that I got her 10 years ago for our first Christmas together. Apparently, some dark purple lipstick and a 700-page book about... Well, actually, I actually don't know what it was about because neither she nor I read it. Um, <laughs> apparently, that wasn't a good start. And it was clear from early on in our relationship that I had some, some work to do in the present buying game. Now, I'm pretty sure things have improved over the years, but that is quite heavily down to the fact that around mid-November these days, a list appears on my phone in the form of a shared note, which just happens to have some suggestions. <laughs> just to really firm things up, these suggestions also include the color, size, and a link to where said item can be bought. As I said, I'm much better at buying presents these days. But the thing about Ellie is... She likes surprises. And so out into the unknown I venture, hoping to stumble across something that she might like. Surprise presents can be good or bad, can't they? Probably all had that moment when you open a gift and it isn't quite what you expected. When I was seven or eight years old, I woke up early on Christmas morning with the excitement of the day ahead. Now, the tradition in our household was that the presents would be under the tree downstairs and we'd all open them together, but this year was different. I opened my eyes, and there at the foot of my bed was a present. I, quickly, inst I instantly thought, is this the pair of trainers that I've been hoping for? I rushed to open it. Stopping to read the gift tag, I'm not an animal. To Josh, <laughs> happy Christmas, love from Dad. I ripped off the paper, and there was a trainer box. I flung open the lid. To my surprise and my shock, there inside the box were school shoes. <laughs> Let me add, not new school shoes. This is the pair that I'd been wearing all term long. <laughs> now, you'll be pleased to know that I did get the trainers that I'd been hoping for. And we could perhaps give my dad some credit for teaching me a valuable life lesson that it's unwise to judge from outward appearances. But I think more accurately, he just thought it'd be a funny practical joke. And <laughs> 20 years later, I can kind of see the funny side too. <laughs> Sometimes a gift isn't what we're expecting. And this was true of the gift of Jesus, the baby we celebrate at Christmas. For hundreds of years, there had been a promise in Jewish history of a Messiah, a king who was going to come and save God's people. It seemed fitting that this king should be born in a palace to grow up to be a mighty ruler. But as we've already heard from our readings this afternoon, this king was born in a manger, in the most humble and insignificant of circumstances. This truly was unexpected. And yet, as Shola read for us just a moment ago from Matthew chapter 2, we see that despite his insignificant circumstances, Jesus was no insignificant baby. It said in verse 11, On coming to the house, they, that is the wise men, saw the child and his mother, with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their, then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Let's pause to consider this for a moment. These wise men, or magi, they traveled many miles, and when they came and they saw the baby with his mother, they bowed down and they worshipped him. This isn't your typical response in seeing a newborn. Shouldn't it have been more like, Oh, isn't he lovely? Oh, he's got your nose, Mary. No. In reverence for who this baby was, they bowed down and they worshipped him. And in recognition of how precious his life was, they opened their treasures and they presented him with priceless gifts. This is where we get our tradition of gift giving at Christmas. But who is this baby? And why was he to be worshipped in such a way? What makes Jesus the ultimate gift of Christmas? We've probably all had a moment when you open a present and you can't quite work out why you've been given it. Now, this can be particularly awkward if the gift giver is in the room and you have to do that thing and be like, oh, wow, that's, that's so kind, thank you so much. 
on the inside, you're thinking, what on earth is that? What, why, why, would I, why would I want that? But, you know, perhaps this is what's going through your mind when you hear that Jesus is the greatest gift. What makes him so special? How is he different to any other baby? And ultimately, what relevance does this have for us here today? A couple of years ago, my wife and I, we got one of these gifts which provoked a similar response. It was from one of our friends, and it was three recycling bags. I'll be honest with you, my instant reaction, though I kept it internal, um, was, do I really need bags which say paper, glass, and plastic on them? But to be, I've got to be honest how wrong I was. It's changed the way we live. I mean, <laughs> to give you a little bit of context, our friend who got these bags for us, They'd been staying with us for about a month at the time while they worked in the area, and so they'd lived with us. They'd seen how we lived. They'd clearly seen our very haphazard recycling system. And in recognition of this need, they got us a present which at first seemed perhaps a bit unnecessary, but it turned out to be a game changer. What our friend had done was recognize our need and give a gift which met the need that we didn't even realize we had. In a much, much more important way, This is what we see the beginnings of in the Christmas story. Jesus, the baby celebrated at Christmas, is the gift who meets our greatest need. But what is our greatest need? Let's pause and think about that for a moment. What do we need most? The Bible teaches us that our greatest need is not money or comfort. It's not a good job or a nice house. It's not even good health or good relationships. The Bible teaches us that our greatest need is to be forgiven by God. It says that because of our selfish choices, we're separated from God and we will be judged according to his standard for the way we live our lives. But you know, is that really so bad? I mean, come on, loads of people are worse than me. Surely most of us won't come out looking too bad. So do we really need this gift? When we compare ourselves to others, we can justify most of our behavior. Yeah, we're not perfect, but who is? And this is it. God is. God is infinitely loving, ultimately pure, and perfectly just. Now, there's a mystery to this. It's hard for us to really comprehend it, but it's what makes God, God. If we could fully understand him, then he would be no God at all. And it's in light of God's perfect love and his perfect justice that we are all found to be guilty before him. It says in Romans chapter 3 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But this isn't where the story ends. A couple of chapters later from the same book it says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. that While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Because of his great love for humanity, for you and for I, God made a way for us to have, to live in, in loving relationship with himself. This is why Jesus is the greatest gift that we could ever receive. The Bible teaches us that Jesus is God's son. God in human form. From his manger birth, Jesus grew up learning his carpentry craft in the family business until the age of around 30 when he began to do the unthinkable. He performed miracles. He healed the sick, calmed the storms and preached to the crowds. All of this to show that he was the Messiah, the Savior predicted long ago. He was who he said he was. He was God's son. Jesus lived a perfect life. Unlike us, he didn't act out of selfish motives or out of pride or anger. He lived the life that you and I couldn't and In the most incredible act of sacrificial love, he willingly went to die on a Roman cross to pay the price for our sin so that we may be forgiven. God accepted that the price that had been paid by Jesus, that means that if we turn from going our own way and we put our trust in what he did for us, then we can be forgiven for everything we've ever done wrong. Not only that, but our eternal destiny will no longer be separation from God but to be with him in heaven where there is no pain, sickness, or sorrow. This is the good news of Jesus, the greatest gift. And you know what's really amazing about this? It's offered to us as a free gift. As you receive your presents from those you love this Christmas, 
I'm pretty sure that your response will not be to get out your wallet and to ask if they take cash or card. No, a gift, although it may have cost the gift giver much, is given for free. And this is exactly what we see in the gift of the good news of Jesus. Though it costs Jesus his life, he offers it to anyone who would choose to accept it for free. It's not about earning it. It's not about being a good enough person. It's about opening up our hands, reaching out and accepting the gift that's on offer to us. For anyone here who will be spending Christmas with kids in the house, this is just how they receive their presents, right? With eager expectation, they tear off the paper with the excitement for what's inside. Jesus said to his followers to come to him like little children. The wonderful thing about kids is they receive the gift as it's supposed to be received. They don't think, oh no, they've definitely spent more on this than what we spent on them. We've all done it. They don't sneak into the other room and quickly cobble together something because we didn't think we were buying for each other this year. No, with open hands they reach out and they take the present which is meant for them. Now I wonder, how do you unwrap your presents at Christmas? There are a number of different techniques and I've got to be honest, it feels like the older we get, the, the worse we are for this. I wonder if anyone here is guilty of some of these approaches. You've got what I would call the careful and considered approach. Now, I reckon you can tell this sort of person a mile off by the look in their eye when they see some of that shiny wrapping paper. Painstakingly, they're peeling off every bit of sellotape, being careful not to rip the paper. Then what do they do? They fold the paper up and they say, oh, that is lovely paper. <laughs> lovely. It's as if the wrapping is more important than what's inside. And you know, there's a risk that this is how we can approach the gift of the good news of Jesus. Maybe you enjoy the Christmas traditions. Perhaps you go to church every now and again. But have you missed the gift that's inside all of this? An offer of the forgiveness of your sins. The cure to your greatest need and an opportunity to have a personal relationship with God, your creator. The second approach to unwrapping is the technique that my granddad used to have for all of his presents. Now, this is possibly due to the fact that a man of a certain age only really gets about three different sorts of presents, don't they? But what he would do when you give him the present was he'd look at it, he'd determine its weight, he'd feel for any unusual textures, and finally give it the obligatory shake, which I have to say that is only useful if it's Maltesers. And then <laughs> he would place the still fully wrapped present back in the bag and with a cheerful smile say, well, no need to unwrap that, I know what that is. But you know, there's an obvious risk with this too. What if the supposed book that I bought my granddad was in fact a voucher, which by the time he got round to actually open it, it was out of date and now useless. It always pays to open the presents because when you look inside, you may be surprised at what you find. Does anyone here like Toblerone? I can see an excitement as if I'm going to throw one out. I'm not, but um, <laughs> my daddy loves Toblerone. And so... This is the staple present for us as three kids to get him each year, uh, Christmas, birthdays, Father's Day, any, any gift really. Um, but Toblerone, they're a very unique shape, aren't they? Very distinctive. And so we've been known to wrap it in all sorts of creative ways to try and keep some level of surprise. But you know, however it's wrapped, whatever it looks like on the outside, for my dad, the importance is to get past all of that to the chocolatey goodness inside. You know, if Jesus is the greatest gift that meets our greatest need, then my encouragement to you is to not get distracted by the outer wrapping or to leave that gift unwrapped while, like my granddad, thinking that you know exactly what's inside, but to take off the wrapping and to explore the claims found inside. As a church, we'd love to invite you to do just this. We're going to be hosting a course called Christianity Explored where you would be so welcome to come and explore what the Bible has to say about who Jesus is, why he lived, and what that's got to do with us. You'll see one of these invitations uh, on your seat or on a seat near you. Please do take it and come along on the 22nd of Jan, uh, starting at 7 p.m. here at Barnabas. It's going to be really relaxed. We'll start with food together, and then we'll um, have opportunity to watch a video and bring any questions that you might have. 
If you'd like to sign up today, there will be opportunity to do that um, on the welcome and info desk. So please do head and chat to those guys on your way out. If you want to find out any more or if you want to sign up. This Christmas, as you give and receive gifts, please consider Jesus, the ultimate gift who meets our greatest need. A gift given out of love and offered to us this Christmas. With childlike faith, my encouragement to all of us here, whatever our background, whatever we find ourselves right now, is let's take it, open it, and see what's inside. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful Christmas. Thank you so much.